over at GoArmy.com. Oh, oh Rusty Wallace, Wallace is down. Oh. Rusty Wallace bumped out of that high lane. Ricky Rudd goes to the lead. Here it's right now. Well, they get sorted out here at the front. Uh, I think everything will work out fine, but boy, Oof. Ryan Newman and Rusty were really going at it. Three wide all the way from 10th place on back. Four laps to go. Well, Jeff Bodine gets into time. They saved it. Holy cow. That's as close as a tire go, go down right a good there. Shot. He, I think that the, here you go. They get into it right there. That's going to cut down a tire, I guarantee you. Left rear tire. They go off in the corner. You're going to see a little smoke here now, I believe. See yep, the there it is. There it is. A left side tire going that down. That thing's going to blow the left rear. 42 car. 42. Yeah. Who's involved in this. Watch this. 48 into the... 10 and then the 42 just nicked the 48. See the right yeah. rear damage? Yeah. And like I said, the clearances are so close between the body and the tires now to get these cars through the air, it doesn't take much to make them rub. He was, was a great save by Jimmy Johnson off turn four. He gets under Mike Skinner, makes contact with him. About that time, he gets hit in the right. Hasn't hit. Oh, there goes Bliss sliding through. Man, I can't believe those guys didn't hit anything. Saved it, caught it, <laughs> saved it, caught it. All right. Nice shot by Junior, too, because I'm not sure where to go on that one. He just slid up. You're already loose here. Slide up in front of a car. That takes the air off your spoiler like uh, we were talking about earlier on the Home Depot virtual garage. He just lost traction, and now he's doing everything. That was a nice job by Earnhardt. It was. He did a good job because, like I said, Biffle came back and forth a bunch of times. Come from, this is by far the best his car has been. Oh, nice. And he's turned Ricky Rudd sideways up. And how did Rudd save that car? That is a save right there. Car around. He just got way high up and it turned straight. And Rudd got away from him. Just flipped the 25 car Vickers. Guys, get ready. Get he ready. was up there all by himself. The, the car looked like it got a little bit loose. He got really, really high, kept it off the wall. First caution of the day. Four guys. Was five. running in the eighth spot. And he is trying to pass Casey Kane, that nine car, on the outside. And you're right, Well, it looks like he just got some of that loose stuff, the debris up there, and around he goes. Right in front of Jeff. Oh, and he just barely caught the front of that car. He almost got away with it. Almost got away with it. Just he tried saving it there, and he had to turn it off the walls just a little bit. Look at Burton right there. A lot of guys just going through blindly. You just watch the smoke when you're going through here. I mean, this is what you see when something happens. Well, he was actually lucky because he saw the fire car going down the racetrack, so he knew if he didn't move, it'd be gone by the time he got there. It's the second week in the row he's had trouble early, although this time it looks like Burton got through without any damage. Well, that outside lane really took off this time, didn't it? Oh, it sure did. Bush in the five car. Oh! oh Mark Martin! Man, oh man, up the hill! Wow! What a great job Mark Martin did a save in that race car. Five car, he gets underneath the six, gets him loose, Mark does a great job hanging on to this car. So does Jimmy McMurray in that 26. But, you know, that's not something. I think Mark Martin needs to take a walk down and talk to Kyle after this race because that was a little bit too much too early. Dave? And after they congratulated Mark Martin for a great save, after which Mark said thanks, whoo, they said, we will go down and find out what the urgency was with the five car. And there you see where the 24 car gets in the back of the 17. It caused the fender to go in on the tire. But the 26 car of Jamie McMurray also ran in the outside retaining wall. There's a huge domino effect when somebody three or four car links in front of you or even further slows up. And it reaches deep into the field. That's on board with Junior. Boy, I tell you, I don't know how in the world Mark Martin saved this car. He shouldn't have saved that car. I mean, that was a heck of a job. And then, like you say, after you you get happy after you saved it, then you get mad because of what caused it. Five to go, and there. 
Here he goes. Into 29, Kevin Harvick is going to go by him as well. It's not over. Yeah, but there's no question. His 15th career victory, seventh on a short track, Boot scoot. That boogie. Matt did a whale of a job not to spin that sucker out. But now he's frustrated, rightfully so, ever so slightly. Goodness gracious, it didn't even put a scratch on the two car. And here's what happened between Jeff Gordon and Matt Kenseth. I think there was some other contact before that, though. I think uh, uh, that's how Jeff got by Matt. How about old Carl Edwards? Jeff Gordon out of his car, and he's not happy with Matt Kenson. Boy, that's out of, now, that's totally out of character. Kenseth approached Gordon. Kenseth walked over to Gordon's car with his palms out, his arms open, as if to talk about it. Gordon would have none of it. Emotions never fails. Get in line, folks. It's Going to the Oval Office. Now, it's all serious stuff. We have had 35 lead changes, but that's at the start finish line. That doesn't count all the western way around this two and a half mile track. Oh, it's Reed Sorensen, I believe. No, Casey Kane and now I'm sideways on the back straight. Where the heck was he going, Larry? Well, he just got shuffled out of the deck, Daryl. But you can recover so nicely with this car. Oh, Elliot, tell me what happened to bring out the caution flag right side there. Oh, my goodness. There's Boyer sideways. Digs up a little bit of that grass. We see that more here on cars exiting onto the straightaway off the corner, off the banking, is spinning out. This is Gil Martin, the crew chief on Kevin Harvick's car. Like, oh, I cannot believe that just came yeah. out. And of all things, our teammate. And you saw Delaney Harvick there on the left and on the right. That's Kevin's wife. Just put her chin down on her chest and couldn't believe it. And a total of 29 cars on the lead lap. The first car, one lap down, is on the inside track there, the 11 of Denny Hamlin. And two cars are out of this race, Dave Blaney and Jeff Fuller. Dale Earnhardt Jr., who led 90 laps last oh! week. Look out! This could be that the was, big oh, one. Nice save, Jamie McMurray. Wow. Jamie wrecked. He just didn't know it. I know, like you say, he's running three lines wide all by himself. Now, here they are once again. Now, watch. They're going to get a run on him. 17's out there, but he's all by himself. Dale Jr. is going to have to get up there. Oh, he turned him. Yikes. He Truex yikes. On the bottom. Truex can't save it. Can't oh, push. No. Pushes around. He tried, he tried, he tried. He just couldn't hang on to it. He only blocked so many places so many times. We get down here in the corner. You see the 31 gets in the back of the gets him loose. How he ever got from how he gets all the way to where he did and not hit anything, I'll never know. And Martin Truex he just with checked Carl up. Edwards. He was right in front of Carl Edwards who'd been trying to avoid all this. He just checked up a little too much. Down on the yep. apron, down on the apron. Neither car ever got, uh, neither one of them ever got hit, other than when yep. the uh, 31 knocked the 18 around. I know, it's incredible there's no contact. Now, Jeff Burton had been frustrated with Kyle Busch <laughs> from where Kyle tried to run him down to the flat a few laps earlier. This is just some amazing driving. Unbelievable. Montoya, amazing driving. Montoya. It? Wow. Reagan may have, the sick car may have gotten to the back of Montoya just a little bit, but I don't think that was bad. And now we hear that, you know, the 18 has no starter. He can't get cranked. He's going to go a lap down. And move up front. Oh, 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 56. Truex. And Tony Stewart all of those guys spun. Start slowing down at the end. Start slowing down at the end. Now Truex not be penalized because he arrests his speed coming down pit road nascar will not penalize him for taking that evasive action he had that same experience in practice with dale jr they spun off of that corner and wasn't so lucky watch the right side of your screen and the napa car just gets, gets turned on mm. the bumper of labani thought he had it saved and was going to be able to get back up in the track but he was afraid to try it 
He'll be a straightaway or more behind, but he's still on the lead. And Tony timed it a little better. But can Bobby Labonte get up there to help Tony Stewart, or is he a man alone? He's in no man's land. I just don't know if he can hang out there. But look at the two Bush brothers, Kurt Bush in the 22 and Kyle Bush in the 18, working the high side. I'm hearing they're going, oh, we got a car around. Got a car around right Bobby there. Bobby Gordon saves, saves it. But the, the six is being black flagged. Tony Stewart was just a sitting duck right there with yeah. no help. He gets in right here, which is good. But here comes Robbie Gordon with a head of steam. And Tony had filled the hole that Robbie was going to try to go in. Robbie almost saves it, saves it, saves it. Well, it is time to go now. You can't lay back anymore. You can't hang back. The only way you'd be hanging back right now is if you can't make it on. Oh, there it is. Pipple knocked down onto the apron, and he hangs onto it. Wow. That's two big wrecks that should have happened. Him and his teammate, Matt Kenseth. I don't know how they both didn't crash in each one of these incidents. Make his way up through there. You're going to see a lot of new players at the front. Gordon and Jr. with a run to the outside of Harvick. Now Bush has a chance. How do you do that? Watch Greg Biffle. Oh, my. Yeah, you're supposed to wreck right there. Unbelievable job by Greg Biffle. And then Gordon and Junior. Yeah, Gordon's going for the lead here. He's got a head of steam with that. Junior. <laughs> Sideways in the crowd. Looked like maybe Junior expected McMurray to protect that bottom lane, and McMurray moves up. And when Gordon went high to go around him, that caught him. Jimmy got a great restart. I thought he was going to be able to get up well out in front of Kenson. Yeah, but Kenson got over on his quarter pound for just a second. You see Jimmy try to get away, but Kenson had a good restart. Jimmy just got loose before he got down in there. He was just trying to drive it off in the corner and make sure that he got ahead. And he just got loose. That's so reminiscent of what we saw at Indianapolis last Sunday. Remember, off of turn two, the guy on the bottom getting loose under the guy up front, and the guy who's running behind them ducks low and takes the lead. Said thank you very much. It worked to Jimmy Johnson's benefit last Sunday at Indy to his detriment here at Pocono today. Well, Keselowski, he's out of control trying to avoid him. Keselowski comes straight across the race track. Caution, caution, caution. Same gas. There was a wreck behind you. There's a wreck behind. Plus, Jimmy Johnson's hands is against that. Still there. Still there. Still outside. Inside, 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 inside. Inside, inside, inside. Keep going, buddy. Inside. 17 three-quarter gallon fuel cell that we're running here. That's about four and a half more gallons than the cars had here last year, which lets them go about 10 or 12 more laps. <laughs> Only three flat conditions on fuel. Excuse me, there <laughs> David Stremme yeah. just about got turned around by Kevin Harvick. He did. That and was... Harvick had to back so far out of the gas. Jeff Green got to him. So did Martin Truex. So did Matt Kenseth. And so did Dale Jarrett. That now this, scary this will right take here. your breath like yeah. it took mine. This is scary right here. That is uh, he, a great had, uh, he had quite a bit of help, it looked like. I guarantee you. He got Stremmy's attention. Hardly slowed Stremmy's car, but it took all the momentum away from Harvick. And everyone else there around oh. them. And up here. They're then the guy in the five. Kyle Busch. Jeff Burton walked up the racetrack, got on the side of Greg Biffle in the 16. Now he's going to lose all these positions. Right, now. Uh oh, wide, uh -oh. the 17. The 17 is going to be in trouble. He saved it. They are four wide through the trial, but five to go. Swinging high on three. Keep it digging. Still three. Stay in it. Come on. Clear. Oh, there you go, man. I looked up. I saw him. I said he was going to wreck. 
think he probably said the same. Do we have that good hands thing yet? <laughs> There's a prime candidate for it. Mark that one down. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of candidates for that one tonight. Nice save. Yeah. Uh oh, there he yeah, goes. That car didn't look real stable to me. Keep it off the wall here. He's coming down pit road. Yeah, I think he'll be. He'll keep it out of the wall. But we'll have to put some tires on, and he'll have to start in the back. Once again, we had the next car. We've seen this a couple times during the course of the weekend. But watch it. He hits that bump. And the car looks like he was down on the bottom, and it just it came Whoa. around on him. It didn't have the grip. And this is where he got lucky because he was headed for a backup car, guys. And watch him work inside that car. Great job by Travis. It. I mean, he never quit driving all the way through that. This is probably, what, 150, Whoa. 160 miles an hour? You know what? Amazing I, he didn't hit the wall. I'm happy, very happy everything turned out. But. Something tells me this stuff does not scare him at all. He uh, was trying to, he spun in, in qualifying last race at Charlotte. Let's watch but his hands. I in think there, in Jack. Charlotte they had to go to a backup car. They actually hit in Charlotte. Yeah. It just doesn't He's scare him. It. it doesn't scare him. He, Locked he, up the wheels, continued to drive it, and didn't hit the look wall. Look at that. Back to the right. Up. Now back to the left. And back to the right again. We, we <laughs> call that swatting flies. At least momentarily. Look how fast he is, too. Oh, there goes, around goes John West Towney sideways. He's going to be able to save it. What wow. a move by John West Townley. See, Brad drives to the, he's loose before Brad ever even gets to him. No, it didn't have anything to do with Brad, but watch this. That's what you do. You never give up driving. You never give it up, and, and he never locked it down. He never gave up. He pulled that thing out. I You'll see the 18 get in the back of the 22 after 22 just lost it. Scott Wimmer got behind in the steering off turn two and never could get a corral, could he? Now the question is, who comes and who doesn't? 23 cars on the lead lap. Jeff Green is the lucky dog. Boy, this is going to be interesting. Now here... Yeah, you see he was down under the 18. The car starts up the hill. He puts a little extra wheel in it, and when he does, the back snaps around. Darrell, I'm quite amazed he was able to drive out of that. I mean, that car was was sideways. Uh, what do we always say about him? He's a wheel man. Yes, he is. One inside, one inside. Okay, four tires, guys. Did we crash or else? No, we haven't hit nothing. Just keep rolling, man. Four tires, four tires. Oh, he's oh. going to save it. Dallas, go oh. come on. Get it cranked up. That would have been the greatest save of that all would, time. That would have been great. But he, look, I, let's go back and watch where he got hit and where he finally got into the back of the wall because he drove it through the corner sideways the whole way. And start thinking about if you're coming under this caution, too. If you're going to pick. Yeah, you watch, you watch him go down in here, and Casey Cage just gets into him. Yeah. You see Casey wiggle and get up into him That's right there. 200 feet, 300 feet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow, man, he was out of shape. Back inside. You're getting just a little bit braver all the time. They've always been Ooh. bold, now they're getting brave. Oh, Kozlowski took Junior right down below the line. You know what, I think... I think you're right, Daryl. Now, Junior blended back up right about where he was running. But the James Finch car for Kozlowski, which is a car purchased from Hendrick Motorsports, power plant and all, now slips to the back of the pack. But that car has been kind of slow. That's what happened to the 83 and the 11 earlier. They ran up on him and didn't have anywhere to go. Here's another look at what happened when Dale Jr. and Brad Keselowski got together. One outsider. I believe you'll see they kind of both go the same there way at go. the same Pushing time. The 12. There's nothing in front of that 09. I think the 9 was, digging, 09 was trying to get out of the way. You're good. You're good. That look at Kyle Busch back there. He's three wide middle. He's looking for a hole. He just wanted to get to the front somehow. I think he over and over. Whoa! whoa. Oh, that's a nice save there. That's the 81 car. And he was the fastest dodge. And well, he's got a tiger by the tail right now with that 18 car. 
might learn something from Kyle Busch right here. That was Maybe pretty, what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty impressive. He hung on to he that. He's still able to make a nice run on the outside of Kyle Busch. Saw a little bump draft from Stephen Wallace there a moment ago as Kyle Busch goes by. Stephen gave Brad Kozlowski a little bit of a bump. Now you can see how that momentum, he's got a hold run in. You see how he's sucking right up to the back end of that 27 car, Jason Keller. You see it, DJ Kennedy way up high right here, and he has to put a little wheel in it. Yeah. And, uh, man, he's losing a little rear grip. Yeah, Michael Annette actually didn't do anything wrong. He was just holding his line, and 81 got uh, a little there. bit sideways, a little bit loose. Two outside there, two outside, two outside, two outside still. Still two outside there, go low, stay low there. About hit outside there, stay low. Still three wide there, still three wide. What really bothered me about uh, Carl Edwards. Oh, oh, there he goes right. I said just what I was getting ready to say. Hang on. I believe Tony. that was Tony. And I was just getting ready to say Carl Edwards and Sorensen were getting impatient. They were starting to really, really wear Tony's bumper out. No flag. We stayed green. That's what they were going to do. Yes, it was. We saw Dale Earnhardt do that once here in the IROC race. Eddie Cheever punted him down to the grass. Earnhardt shortcut it across the turn one grass and popped right back up on the speedway. Kept on digging. Right? Right there. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's a, a lot of damage. I'm be surprised it didn't bend the toe, uh, knock the toe out. The asphalt goes abruptly there from flat to 31 degrees. There's the tap by Edwards. Here comes Tony. Dirt digging. Tap. <laughs> Golly. Great camera work. Here's right, uh, right in front of the grass. You see it. And the fact that he didn't come up in front of somebody or run in, into someone was what was amazing. Darrell, he probably only slowed down about four or five miles an hour. Well, that's why I told you. He come across the line. He's running eight. 